Hey, I'm Andy. I'm CJ. I'm Lee. I'm Sean. I'm Kev. And we are Thy Art is Murder. Y'all. There's a lot of bad things happening around the world at the moment. Uh, a lot of things that are obviously rooted in religion. Uh, stupidity. Uh, poor education. Uh, indoctrination. Poor political moves and animal rights. Animal rights, just people being ignorant and retarded, um, and it really bothers us. So we wrote a bunch of songs about those problems, I guess. And pedophiles too. We have a song about killing pedophiles. Pedophiles also generally accepted that pretty shit people. So you know, we we just wrote uh, an album that was a. It's not a holy war like a jihad. It's a war on things that are holy. So. I think people misconstrued the title a little bit. They're like, oh, it's a holy war. It's like, nah, it's just a war on things that are holy. I think it just uh, ran its course, whichever way it was going to. You know, we we really had uh, great chemistry with Will, and um, we had like a, a very uh, similar think vision for what we wanted the end result to be we have like similar taste in music and as far as production goes I don't really know much about that so I just we kind of let him do his thing Andy's was a little more involved um, yeah it's it, it was different from the first time with hate to this time with Holy War if anything it was it ran a lot smoother uh, this time around because we kind of knew what we we're in for and how how well prepared we need to be and um, by the time it was it was time to record and actually start tracking when everything was set up so we just knocked it out quite quick and everything ran really smooth kind of like I think we're starting to, to dial it in with Will as being kind of like the sixth member of the band kind of overseeing the uh, the record and the, the songs and being an outside influence to, to say you know I think this is how it should be, or whatever. So excited for the next one with him too, because we might be able to even, you know, hone it in even a little more. So yeah. There's one. Yes, there's one. Um, it's like one of my favourite bands of all time. Vocalists, just humans. Uh, Winston McCall from Parkway Drive will um, feature on one of our songs. And um, he's a friend of the band, and it was cool that we could have like a, such a good friend like we had on Hate with Nico Bronson and Joel Birch from Amity. Um, it's really cool that we can have like our friends on our records and not just people that we respect as musicians and artists, but they're our friends as well. So it's cool to it's like makes it a little kind of like family kind of thing. Also cool that it's another Australian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Australian guest on Hate, Australian one on this one. That's it. Maybe another one on the third one. Probably Holy War, the... Nah. nah. Naked and Cold? Holy War you wrote in like a day. But it took me ages to get it. Yeah. I, I think... Yeah. Naked and Cold. There was some yeah. that came together over like a year. Yeah, actually, probably the longest process was... Naked and Cold. Yeah, or... You had that. Child yeah. of Sorrow was kind of like bits and pieces. For a long time. For Hard to say, because Sean started writing riffs like, uh, probably close to two years ago, and he just worked on them, and some of them, I, I remember he, he completed when we got to the studio to start recording, so I mean, I guess you could say that took a year. I don't know. Uh, some, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's, uh, there's like a trend with social media nowadays, spreading misinformation with like satirical news websites and a lot of people sh like repost them because they think that it's like real news uh so there's like a song that's about that like, it's not a specific event but it's a specific trend that i noticed in the last two years uh holy war was influenced by the story of salman rushdie and the satanic verses and how uh, a particular religious army like went after him and assassinated two of the interpreters involved with the book uh, so it was kind of like it was an ironic song because it would like maybe make the same thing happen again, but uh, hopefully not. Hopefully not. Oh, uh, and uh, 
there was these walruses like way up north. I saw, I saw this thing on on Facebook, and because of the global warming melting the ice caps, they either have to go further south to like Greenland or something, or they have to follow the ice way up north, and it's creating this massive gap between them and where their food is meant to be. And the same thing's happening with polar bears and dolphins. There are going to territories that they've never and been whales. before, and whales to, to either follow the ice or to go back to land, and it's creating this gap between what they eat. Polar bears now are like starting to find and capture dolphins and eat them because they get trapped under the sea ice because they, you know, they don't know which way to go. And, and they're uh, mammals, so they need to come up for you. Yeah, and so, so they're like they're dying, and fur and claws kind of like a twist on that where they're not dying because of what we did. They're choosing to kill themselves because they hate us. This is what we're doing. Yeah. Animal suicide. What we usually do is like we'll come up with a theme. I think on Holy War we were stuck on like four or five songs with a writer's block, so we'll find like a theme that we haven't discussed really before or sung about, and then like myself and Marsh and Will will go away for that night together, like separately, and write, I might write a few phrases and Marsh might do it and Will might, and then we'll come together and we'll discuss what we've written, and then something that Marsh writes may trigger something inside of my head and you know so on and so forth and it just kind of comes together sometimes one of us has written a whole song in half an hour sometimes it's like a three-way collaboration of the same topic yeah the music generally comes first and then we pattern the, the lyrics over the music with like a rap track like me or cj or will we'll sit there with the mic and talk out the phrasing like how holy war how like, what the, is it? the lyrics should be be screamed or whatever. Sean writes pretty much 99% of the music and brings it to us and then I guess we all listen to it. And then uh, I guess before writing lyrics, the most important part is we sit down and talk about themes. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, what, do you, what would you like to have a song about? And that's the hardest part is coming up with the idea. Writing the lyric to the idea is the easy part because you know what you're writing about. It's trying to find a new concept or a new uh, approach or direction to look at a concept to write about it uh, you know that's the that's the, generally the tricky part to make it interesting um, I feel bad every time we answer this because it's not cool at all I don't think it's even even like clear what it where it is I think we were lied to by our old guitarist he said it was it's in Macbeth or something like it's a quote from Macbeth I'm like I've never, I've never looked that up, or like, <laughs> saw if it checked out, but... Unfounded. Yeah, the, an old member came up with it, reading some Shakespeare. I did nothing, I just played in a band since I was 13, never worked in the industry, care not for working in the industry. Worked in like the fashion industry for many years. I was a sheet metal fabricator. I um actually been playing music from quite a young age. Played the bass mostly um, in some. I used to play in a funk band at school. Um, had another band that was kind of like <coughs> cross between at the drive-in and Parkway Drive or something like. You know, really, <laughs> it was crazy times we were living in <laughs> as a fifteen-year-old. With my Epiphone, Les Paul. Yeah, I don't know. Played in a few bands with my, my brothers as well. Just like kind of some prog before it was cool. So, yeah. Yeah. I only got my first guitar when I was like 20 or 19. I didn't really do anything in music before that. And started playing in bands. And now sometimes if I have time off, I try and make records with other bands. But that's about it. I played a bit of piano when I was younger and then moved to guitar and came to a band <laughs> after that, I guess. I don't, I don't wash my hands after I pee before playing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just there, is, there, is a, there is a good reason behind it. It's not just because he likes to be a dirty motherfucker. Uh, but... <laughs> Because I don't know how many times I'm going to pee before I play, sometimes I might actually piss like three times before playing and haven't washed my hands. There's like phantom pissing. Especially if like I have a couple beers because then that makes me need to go to the toilet a whole bunch. 
uh, I didn't like washing my hands because water would get in the skin and the cracks on my hands and then it would get real sticky when I was playing guitar uh, and that's like not a good thing it's like impossible to dry all the moisture out of your pores when actually when I had to play the solos on hate I didn't uh, I didn't have a shower for three days because I didn't want any moisture in my hands. I, I put like plastic bags on it and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't do that. So don't touch my hands uh, or shake my hand before I play. Or just after. Or if anyone or tries just, to play your just guitar. After. Yeah, or don't play my guitar, don't I guess, because there might be Matter of fact, just don't talk to him at all. Yeah. Don't, don't <laughs> it, it doesn't make him. sense anymore because now I have hair for the first time in like six years and I wet my hair with my hands before I play, so it's a completely <laughs> irrelevant thing. We can get we can get Clay to run his hands through your hair for you. But it's just stuck with me, so yeah, I don't wash my hands after I pee like it an hour before playing. I definitely, w I don't know, mine is like putting the jacket on and wetting my hair. Me and Kevy have to, and now Marsh, all wet our hair because we have lengthy hair, and it's like I guess that's like our thing. We share a bottle of water on the side yeah. of stage to bottle of hair bottle of water, purely only for the hair. Anybody drinks from it? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we yell at our TM to go and get us water <laughs> for wetting our hair. We yell at him, good and proper. Yeah. Me, me and Lee usually. Have a bit of a chit chat. A bit of chit chat. Range six of whiskey, six of beers and six whiskey shots. <laughs> Arrange what what's on stage beverages. Beer, Are there for the night? Mojitos, ciders. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Some crazy like a frozen daiquiri or something. I don't know. If our bus is near like the stage, I'll like pre-roll a joint for like when we finish. Um, but that's about it. And then we all slaughter an animal. <laughs> <laughs> Tegan and Sarah. Prince, Beyonce, Mark Ronson. Kendrick. Just Kendrick. open up my iTunes and it is full of it. A lot of top 40, yeah. A lot of top 40. Diplo oh, Major Lazer. All the way. like groceries. They're not really guilty pleasures though, we're proud of it. Um, yeah. They're... Also a bit of Amy Winehouse every now and then, Lana Del Rey. Gucci Mane. Gucci Mane. Gucci Mane. Mane. Mm -mm. We, we all love Jeff Buckley. Jeff Buckley. Muse is another one. I'd, I'd be having a life. That's, 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 <laughs> that's uh, I would definitely be able to do things in life. Um, and I would probably be doing a shitload of fishing and making babies. I would have lots of children. Me and my missus would have 10 children and 15 hairless Chinese crested dogs. I'd have a huge fishing boat and I would breed tropical um, fish. I'd probably be... I don't know. Bosh. I'd be running doing like crap job. Be doing fashion back in the fashion. I like clothes and shoes. Work for like a big designer or company that I like. Hopefully that would be the, the aim. Always wanted to work at JB Hi-Fi, <laughs> which is like, like Best, Best Buy. Buy. Same thing. Probably doing that. I one of my distant cousins is like a manager at one of the stores, so I'd add an in there. <laughs> a lot of uh, big big plans. I uh, I left law school to go touring. So maybe I'd be doing that and be miserable. But after playing in bands, I started producing records for bands and through managing my own band, I guess I'd probably end up on that portion of the world. I wouldn't mind making drums. I wanted to be a marine biologist in high school and I fucked that up. <laughs> <laughs> now look at you. Now look at me. I can't imagine that. I would love to be a marine biologist, but you got to read. Yeah. I like reading. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. It's, it's a form of gear. Anything with NASA or Ibanez, I think, is the consensus. Yeah. I like, I like my Ibanez guitar. It's made by a company called Ibanez. Um, they endorse me. I'm endorsed by Ibanez Guitars. Ibanez Guitars? I really like it. I've, right, actually, it's like they were my favourite guitar company when I first started playing, so it's like a sick honour to get a free guitar or several free guitars from them. And I love Mesa Boogie Cabinets. They're like pretty sick. I like Sennheiser and Nike. <laughs> I don't have a fucking instrument. CJ uses a Sennheiser 935. 35. E935. Yes. We're getting a wireless today, apparently. 
That's, I'm very excited about it. I won't believe it until it's in my fucking hands. Um, <laughs> and also, Nikes. Nike, you've been there since I was nine years old. I know you use child labour to produce these in <laughs> uh, Southeast Asia, as some Vietnam. fans have told me that I don't actually give a fuck about children because I wear Nike. Well, that, you know, I'm sorry that I <laughs> some kids I do that. I don't give a fuck, man. I really like oh. Nike and I really like kids, so... You know, whatever. I'm a fucking criminal because I wear Nike. We all wear Nikes. We use Ibanez guitars and basses, Mesa Boogie amps and guitar uh, guitar cabinets and bass cabinets and bass amps. Mapex drums. Mapex, Mapex drums. drums. Istanbul cymbals. Los Cabos. We wear drumsticks. Blackcraft, Colt, and Evil Soul, and and Nudie Jeans and oh, North and Face. We get some jeans from. Uh, from Hot Topic. Hot Topic. Yeah, we Hot love Topic Hot Topic. And I think fan. that they like us, so that's pretty cool. I wouldn't mind a Summersbury endorsement. Yeah. 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 The <laughs> most important ones are the 935 for CJ. It's very important. we got a special secret kick sample that none of you can have, especially you, Jose Pinedo. <laughs> you will yeah. never get it. You'll never get this. You'll never get this. <laughs> so top secret amps for studio and live that we use are a Bogner Ubershell with EL34s and a oh, diesel VH4 with KT77 oh, tubes shit. and a Mesa Strategy 88 <laughs> bass amp with a dark glass V7K. And boss tuners. All the secret stuff that we use. And this too. Don't use a Kemper or an Axe Effects. That's why we're better than you. Behemoth, decapitated, Metallica. Gojira. Gojira, not Metallica. Fuck. Metallica is alright too. <laughs> I'd like to talk about the Deftones. Deftones would be sick. Yeah. Incubus. Bands that we haven't yet toured with? Yeah. Okay. Slipknot would be cool. Yeah, Slipknot would be sick. King 810. Yeah, King. King 810. Very, you're dead. Poison the Well. I'd like to tour yeah, with a whole bunch three. of rappers. I know it sounds stupid as fuck, Monster but like... Hormone, yeah. Maximum the Hormone. From yeah, the yeah, Maximum the Hormone from <laughs> Japan. Crossface. 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 We've kind of... We've, we've done festivals with show, Crossface. We haven't we'll toured with them, tour. I'd like yeah. to always bring me to because like... They're, they're just huge. that big. And their production is incredible. That drown song is a fucking banger too. And Ollie's a It's another guilty pleasure. We listen to Bring the Horizon. Yeah. A lot. Definitely not portable chainsaw. Mm. Holy War. And we've only been playing it at Soundcheck, but so far it's my favourite. I'd probably say uh, Dead Sun. Or yeah. Pure Strain of Hate. Purest, yeah, Purest Strain of Hate or Shadow of Eternal Sin for me. I'd back Dead Sun. I think the new stuff will be our favourite when we play it though. Yeah. yeah. Even though I've only been jamming it, it's you can already see everyone's hell stoked to be playing it. I think Fur and Claw and Naked and Cold are going to be extremely fun to play. Child of Sorrow as well. Infamous. Holy War. We've just been playing the uh, the hate songs for so long, so we're, pr we're pretty excited to be playing some new playing stuff. some new songs. Finally, yeah. I would be clearly Jon Snow, I think, because <laughs> I'm brave, <laughs> handsome, <laughs> not scared to go beyond the wall, you know. Yeah, you've definitely been beyond that wall. <laughs> I like how you described yourself, like, because I'm brave, that's what... <laughs> and I'm and I'm handsome. I'm good with a sword. <laughs> I don't, I've do never, either, I haven't watched either either, and I don't, I don't really it's care to watch it. Bad but show. I would be uh, Johnny Knoxville, uh, Johnny Depp, rather, in the, playing the character of Hunter S. Thompson in the movie Fear and Loathing Las Vegas. <laughs> 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 Lee would be the kid that climbs up and watches the people having sex and then gets... He gets pushed off. Yeah, it. that's I, the only, only, only thing only I've seen. seen I've the only thing I've seen. I'm sure it would have to be the guy that carries me around. Oodle. Oodle. Maybe I can be Oodle. Is Oodle. there dragons? Is there dragons in <laughs> All you can say is Oodle. Yeah, Khaleesi. yeah. Oh, Khaleesi's Oodle. a dragon. The, blonde, the, the hot blondie. Yeah. Yeah. She's a dragon. She's the mother. mother of the dragon. Uh, I'll be... Khaleesi? I'll be, no, her, you'll like be the a, guy that bangs her. Yeah, yeah but bang the dragon her. that bangs Khaleesi as a dragon. That's so a I want to be a dragon. I'll That's be her own kid. That's incest. Dragon. I'll dragon. be Khaleesi's kid that doesn't bang Khaleesi then. Maintaining That's the bloodline. Still a dragon. You can be a dragon. I want to be a dragon. <laughs> I think it's 300. 
two ninety. Two ninety, isn't it? Engineering. Engineering's two ninety, I think. I think it uh, definitely wasn't three hundred. Yeah, no, I think it's just short. They kept bumping the BPN up on me one time, making me track it, pricks. So whatever they got it to that day would have been it. Yeah. I, th- I think it's two ninety from memory. Most of our stuff now is like two forty, two eighty. too many. Mine is root beer because I don't like drinking alcohol, especially fucking beer. 1889 root beer. It's like this boutique root beer that doesn't come in a can or a bottle. It's only on tap and it's really sick. But also not a real beer. So I like all beer. Coop DNR. We're pretty into craft beer, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Surly Furious. Uh, Surly uh, 1349 Black Ale. What about that dogfish head stuff? I always see you guys drinking Dogfish head's pretty good, also. I'm They're pretty boring. Uh, <laughs> I like pilsners. Any pilsner. Yeah, I like a blonde as well. I like yeah, a, don't mind a blonde or a pale ale. Nice can of emu export. Low carb. Emu export. <laughs> Fosters, we drink a lot of Fosters. <laughs> Actually, on our, our just recent tour in Europe, all the promoters thought it'd be funny to give us Fosters. In the UK. Uh, well. That's the first Fosters I've ever had. In my yeah, life. you can't even buy it in Australia, so. It's shit. It's real bad. It's I think it's owned by the Japanese. Yeah, there you go. Australian beer probably. I fly the flag for VB. VB. Yeah, my Mister drinks VB. It's a good. The big long neck. The Australia's big on lagers, summer ales, stuff like that because it's pretty hot. We're starting to get a better craft brewery scene. Like there's a company called Stone and Wood that's doing some pretty cool stuff at the moment. Little Creatures. Little Creatures. Young Shout out. Little Creatures too. tweeted us. They were going to offer some free beer, but we didn't follow up on it. We do the brewery tour every, every time, time we go to Perth. Perth. Really want to try the Behemoth beer, though. Mm. Beer. Yeah, no good. Yeah. No, do you reckon it would be a heavy beer? It would have to be. That's a heavy beer. Might be a black beer. <laughs> black <laughs> and heavy. A, it's a dark ale. Yeah. Don't think like your band's awesome. Be respectful to bands bigger than you and smaller than you, and on your playing field. Work your ass off. Don't get anything for free. Yeah. And I guess the biggest, hardest thing for myself and I think most of us is money. You survive on very little money for a very period of long, a long period of time. So like you have to sacrifice lots of parts of a normal person's life to be able to. Have fun with your mates, traveling around the world, jumping around on stage. Spend more time playing your instrument and writing songs than buying new pieces of gear or Facebook ads or merch because good songs always win. Mm. Going and playing shows at crappy pubs and stuff is, I think, pretty important. Character building. For uh, for young bands, you know. You gotta play the shit shows to deserve the good ones. And also, yeah, that's when you kind of like have to become a, a good live band for people to take notice. And some bands kind of like skip that. So when it's time to like go on a tour without having done anything before, they're kind of missing a certain spark. They're useless. Because they didn't, you know, spend all those years running around playing fucking shit shows with their parents, driving around. <coughs> Five people watching. Yeah. Read things before you sign them. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good one for young bands. Get a good lawyer. Make sure you actually know what you're getting yourself into. 